Welcome to the ultimate guide on generating high quality leads with YouTube ads. Now, if you've never ran YouTube ads for lead gen before, there are a couple of things that you should know. My name is Neil and I run Lynx Digital, an agency where we've helped hundreds of clients generate leads on YouTube. And I've also taught hundreds of students to do it for themselves. What I'm about to share with you are the patterns that we see across industries with all of our clients. And the first thing that I'm going to say is no, YouTube ads aren't the cheapest place to get leads. If you are just looking for the cheapest leads out there, probably you will find them with Facebook ads or Instagram ads. However, if you are looking for high quality leads that convert better, well then YouTube is still king for that. So the first piece of advice that I'm gonna give to you guys is to not just look at your front end metrics with your lead gen campaign. So don't look at things like cost per lead because you will find, yes, YouTube ads are a little bit expensive. What I recommend is that you look at the holistic picture because that's where YouTube ads come out ahead. When you look at things like cost per sale and the average order value of your clients, you will notice that YouTube ads significantly outperform some of the other ad platforms. So why is it that YouTube ads bring in better quality leads? Well, it all has to do with video ads. See, with video, you're able to educate your leads on your products and services before they interact with your business. Also, video builds a lot of trust and authority right off the bat. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that there really isn't a one size fits all when it comes to lead gen and YouTube ads. Lead cost vary industry to industry, offer to offer. So what I will say is the things that really matter when it comes to the quality of your leads and how much they cost are gonna be things like your actual ads, your targeting, your offer, your nurturing and follow-up sequences. Those are the things that dictate how great and how cheap your leads are gonna be. In order to get you the best leads possible, I'll go over exactly what you need in place in order of importance. Firstly, we'll start off with the actual funnel and offer, and then we'll move on to the ad creative, and then I'll jump onto my computer, show you how to set up campaigns with all of the right targeting and optimization metrics. And the reason we're starting off with funnels and offers is because you could probably have the greatest ad in the world, but if your funnels and offers aren't set up in the right way, you won't get any leads. And similarly, you could have the best targeting and optimization, but if your ads aren't that great, nobody's really gonna be clicking on them anyways. Let's start with funnels because there's really only two types of funnels that work consistently with YouTube ads and lead gen. And these are gonna be lead magnet funnels and book call funnels. Lead magnet funnels start with a YouTube ad, which takes people to a landing page where they submit their information in exchange for a lead magnet. This could be anything like a checklist, a download, a mini course, a audit, anything of that nature. And then the lead is placed into a nurture sequence where they eventually turn into a paying customer. Now a book call funnel starts with a YouTube ad that takes people to a video sales letter or a page where the lead can book a call directly with a sales rep. The sales rep then has a sales call with the lead and then they eventually turn that lead into a customer. Here's how to decide which funnel is going to be better for your business. Let's say you have a incredibly long sales cycle, so something longer than three months, or you are a very established brand, I would recommend going with the lead magnet funnel. Now, one thing to note is you wanna make sure you have amazing, amazing nurture and follow-up sequences with this sort of funnel. If that's not you, I would avoid using this type of funnel. Hey, really quickly, do you want us to run your ads for you so that you can get results like this or this or this or this, 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 this? In that case, check the top link in the description down below and now back to the video. For the other half of people, the booked call funnel will yield better results. Again, with this funnel, you have to make sure that you you have proven sales processes and that you have quality salespeople in place that will actually be able to turn sales calls into customers. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of businesses make, especially with YouTube lead gen campaigns, is that they focus way too much time on the top portion of the funnel, so the yellow area, and not enough time on the purple and blue sections. That's where the real money is made, right? So in order to make sure that you aren't slacking on the bottom half of your funnel, here are some metrics that you should aim to hit. All right, with a book call or a sales call funnel, you wanna make sure that your ads are producing a click-through rate of at least 1.5%. And of the people that click off of your ad, you wanna make sure at least 30% are watching your VSLs or video sales letter. And then of the people that watch the VSL, you wanna make sure at least 15% are booking a sales call. And then of the people that jump on a sales call, you wanna be converting at least 20% of those into paying customers. Similarly, on the lead magnet funnel side, you wanna make sure that 
that your ads are getting a click-through rate of at least 2%. The reason it's higher is because you're offering something free, so more people should be clicking on the ad. Of the people that click off the ad, you wanna make sure at least 65% actually receive your lead magnet. And then of the people that receive your lead magnet, you wanna make sure at least 2% of all those people are actually converting into paying customers. With a proper funnel in place, we can actually move on to the video creative, so the actual ads themselves. If you've watched another video on how to script YouTube ads, you might be familiar with this skeleton. However, for the purposes of lead gen campaigns, we've really stripped them down to four key elements. The hook, the promise, the call to action, and the proof. So hooks are usually five seconds long and they're intended to grab people's attention. The promise is basically the main thing that your product or service delivers on. The call to action is how you get those people watching your ads to actually click off of the ad. And then the proof is basically proof that you're actually gonna deliver on your promise. So these are gonna be things like case studies, results, testimonials, all of that fun jazz. And after running thousands of lead gen campaigns, we found that the sweet spot for ad length is usually a minute 30 or shorter. When you are running lead gen ads, it's very unlikely that you're gonna hit a home run with your very first ad. So what you're going to need to do is make a variation of ads and then test them out. What we do here at Lynx Digital is we test a bunch of different hooks and promises and swap those out and then leave the call to actions and proof in place. Here are the three types of hooks that we like to test out specifically for lead gen campaigns. So the first is going to be questions. The second is going to be dramatic statements. And then the third is going to be outrageous claims. Let me go over a live example to illustrate how these hooks look and how you can use them in your own ads. For this example, let's say you are a personal fitness trainer or somebody that has a online fitness training program aimed at uh, helping new moms lose weight. An example of a question hook might be, are you a new mom in Toronto looking to get fit? An example of a dramatic statement hook might be, 95% of new moms fail to reach their goal weight because they're not eating watermelons. And then the outrageous claim or promise hook, I guarantee you will lose 30 pounds in two weeks by following this secret diet hack. All right, so the next thing that you're gonna need to change out and test out within your ads is going to be the promise section. Like I mentioned, the promise section is comprised of the main thing that your business does. What is the one promise that your business claims to do? We call this your first order benefit. The way we swap out the promise section and make variations is by not changing the first order benefits. Instead, we're gonna take those first order benefits and change the way we position and package them using pains, fears, and desires. So we're gonna take your main benefit and put it through these different lenses to come out with different unique marketing angles. I'll show you an example to better illustrate this as well. Let's say you have a online course that teaches people how to code and get a software development job. Obviously, the main order benefit here is gaining employment. Let's look at it through the lens of desires. So what would a person that might be potentially interested in this course desire? Obviously, the first one that comes to mind is employment. But if you dig a little deeper, another desire that this person might have is actually making money. So you could have one ad that focuses on employment and another ad that focuses on income. In one ad, you could say 95% of the people that graduate from this course get employment within three months. And then the other ad would say the average salary for somebody who graduates from our course is $250,000 per year. This is the same course and the same benefit that it provides, but it's just looked at in two different ways. I'll give you another example with the, the fear lens to really hammer this point in. When you're doing this exercise for yourself, you're going to want to list down all the fears, desires, and pains somebody ha might have. In our case with fear right now, one of the trendy fears right now is that AI is taking over all of these software jobs. So we could really use this angle and make it add around that. And here's how an end product ad promise might look. We've all heard AI is taking over and you don't want to be left behind. This course teaches you how to get a software development job by harnessing the power of AI. Your product or service also probably helps people achieve things that are not their first order benefits. We're going to call these things second order benefits because they kind of go around the first order benefits. And for some people, these are way more important than first order benefits. So you are are also going to want to test out these second order benefits as part of your promise section. So with our example, some second order benefits that you might want to test out would be job stability, benefits like healthcare, or 
not having to go to school to get a new career. When you have all of these different hooks and promises, what I recommend is that you go out there and make at least, at least three to six different ads. So in this diagram here, you'll see we have six unique ads with two different hooks and three different promises. This is the bare minimum that I recommend anyone starting out to test. And when you go about testing these ads, you will quickly realize that there are gonna be a couple of obvious winners. And these are the ads that you're going to want to scale with. Another very important pro tip is that when you are done testing, that you go back and redesign your VSLs and lead magnets based on the angles that have been working and what you realize actually resonates with your audience. Now, before I jump onto my computer and show you exactly how to set up these campaigns, let's quickly talk about targeting and audiences. With YouTube ads, you're gonna be presented a thousand different targeting options and audiences that you can choose from. What I recommend is you focus on the following three. Custom segments based on search, custom affinity audiences based on URLs and in-market audiences. I'll show you exactly how to set these up, but for now, here's what you need to know. Custom segment search audiences are going to be people that are currently searching up keywords that you can input. So for example, if you are a chiropractor, you can actually target people that are searching the keyword back pain on Google. Custom affinity URL audiences. Well, these are gonna be people that are visiting similar sites to URLs that you can submit. So for example, if you have a car dealership, you you can target people that are visiting similar sites to autotrader.com. And then in-market audiences are gonna be people that are currently in the market for a specific sub niche. Don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to set up all of these campaigns and use these audiences right now. All right, so we're here on our test account and the way you set up lead gen campaigns is going to be very similar to how you set up other campaigns. So we're just gonna go ahead and create new campaign. Now with your campaign objective, uh, what I recommend is if you are a brand new account, you actually go create a campaign without a goal guidance but if you have conversions on google already maybe through running google ads or you've run youtube ads in the past before what i recommend is you actually go through with the leads make sure that your conversion tracking is set up so that these conversions are being captured and you are actually optimizing for leads. And then with the campaign type, we are just gonna come in and click video and then go ahead and click continue. All right, we are on the ad group page. Now, setting up lead gen campaigns is going to look a lot similar to some of the other campaign types. And I have tons of tutorials that go in depth on how to set up campaigns. But for this video, I'm just gonna focus on the things that pertain to lead gen campaigns. So campaign name is gonna be lead gen campaign, location's fine, language is fine. Let's go over bid strategy. This is one of the things that trips people up. Now, if you are a brand new account and you don't have a ton of conversions, I recommend that you start off with max conversions. However, if you have been running campaigns for a while, target CPA tends to outperform max conversions, but only when there's conversion history that Google can optimize off of. So what I recommend is until you have hundred leads that come in through YouTube ads, just stick with max conversions. All right, with that, let's move down to budget. And for now, I'll just put in $50, but after this tutorial, I'll show you exactly how much you should be budgeting for your lead gen campaigns. Networks, we can't really change too much of this. Uh, we're not gonna do Google TV, no site links. Let's worry about additional settings. Now, one of the key things that you should be doing is targeting based on devices. We found that tablets and TV screens are notoriously bad for lead gen campaigns. Another thing that I highly recommend doing is actually separating out computer campaigns and mobile campaigns. Again, you will find different lead costs and lead qualities based on the device that you are targeting. So this is definitely something that is going to be unique to your business and your offer and your, your flows, but you do wanna be testing out. We can leave frequency alone for the testing period. We'll leave the ads running all day. No third-party me uh, measurement or video enhancements. All right, let's go down to the ad group page. And this is really where the meat and potatoes of the targeting happens. So uh, we're going to click add an audience. And this is basically where you're going to be able to add all of your three different types of audience. Like I said, custom segments is going to be the first type of audience. And the way you set these up is by creating a new segment. And again, clicking people who have searched for these terms on Google. So let's say I was doing back pain, I've added back pain. That was a uh, custom segments based on search terms. Now let's go over the URL one. So you're gonna do the same thing again, custom segment. And instead of picking one of these two things, you can go uh, people who type these types of websites and you could put it in your URL. So I'll do linksdigital.com. I put in my URL, I'm gonna name this uh, people that visit linksdigital.com. 
Com. And then finally, let's move on to the in-market audiences. Now, these are going to be the most broad and the biggest audiences that you can target out of the three. And the way you get to them is by clicking interest detail demographics. You're going to click here. You're going to do browse. And now we get a whole bunch of in-market audiences and you can really pick which ones pertain to your business. So maybe you're selling beauty products or, you know, you're a med spa and you want to get leads for your med spa. So med spa, manicures, pedicures, boom. Now you can target that exact audience of people that are actually in the market for manicures and pedicures, right? So mess around, see what options are there. Now let's move on to demographics. And I didn't really mention how to do targeting based on demographics. And that's because I think you should be using demographic targeting in addition to whatever other audience type that you decide to go with. Now with demographics, this is obviously going to vary a whole lot based on what sort of business you're running and who you're catering to. But I highly recommend with whatever targeting option that you use, whether it's in market audiences or custom segments that you layer in demographic targeting. So let's say you run the med spa. Obviously, you're going to go target only females. Let's say you want to do 25 to 64 right? What I recommend is that you leave unknown on just because there's a lot of people that jump on YouTube that don't really sign in. So you don't want to be messing out on those conversions. When you have data coming in and you see sometimes maybe unknown audiences aren't really converting, you can turn those off after the fact. With that, uh, we can just save our audience and, and this is going to figure out who we're going to target. All right, so with the audience in play, we're actually gonna be taking off optimized targeting. Again, this is one of those things that you can test with when you have a lot of data in your account. What I've found beginners, especially for starting out, optimized targeting really is a waste of spend. All right, let's go down to the actual ad. And this is where you're, where you're going to place the actual ad that you created, all the six plus adds the different variations. You're just going to plug this in and then hit create campaign and boom, your campaign is live. Congratulations. You've just launched your very first lead gen campaign. Now let's quickly talk about budget because I kind of glanced over that. So what you want to do with all of your campaigns is budget for at least 2.5 X your ideal CPA per day. So what does that mean? So let's say you want leads to come in at $10. So you're going to set the campaign budget to at least $25 per day. This basically just allows Google a lot of spend to make sure that your ads are actually going to be seen and bring in leads. Now let's talk about campaign structure because this is really important. So what you just saw me do was set up a one, one, one campaign. So one campaign, one ad group and one ad. What you're going to want to do is obviously test out a bunch of different ads and also test out a bunch of audiences. So what I recommend is that you test out a minimum of three audiences. So if you're following along, what this basically means is you're going to want to test out three different audiences with six different ads. This is a lot of campaigns if you are following the one, one, one structure. I understand that this can get expensive for a lot of people. So maybe you don't really have the budget out there. You can use the one, one and a few ads structure. So one campaign, one audience and a bunch of different ads and you'll let Google pick the best ad for you. Again, this might not be the best way to go about testing. But again, if you are on a limited budget, this is a way that you can do it. So like I said, you're going to want to test out three different audiences. So these are going to be three different in market audiences or three different audiences that are made based on different URLs or different keywords. Again, you can mix and match these and I highly recommend that you do so. Now, with campaigns, you are going to want to let your campaigns run at least three to five X your ideal CPA. What does this mean? So every different campaign that you are testing, you're going to want them to spend at least three to five X your ideal CPA. So let's say your ideal CPA or cost per uh, lead is 10 bucks. You're going to let each campaign run for at least 30 to $50. So here's exactly how you're going to optimize your campaigns. So once your campaigns have spent the budget, uh, the minimum budget necessary, so 30 to 50 bucks, you're going to take a look at the cost per lead. If if it's within 20% of your ideal CPL, your cost per lead or lower, you're going to keep those campaigns running. If it's much higher than that, turn off those campaigns. What you'll find is definitely a couple campaigns will stand out and those are going to be the campaigns that you're going to be scaling with. In order to learn how to scale those campaigns, watch this video on vertical and horizontal scaling.